this lesson I'm going to show you the core nodes you need to create to do any kind of shader to show color on your 3D object. So I've just created another helix and applied a new shader FX material and here's the shader FX editor. I've made sure that I've got advanced mode enabled and I'll go ahead and delete these nodes as I want to show you the core set of nodes you need to create any kind of shader to show color. So the first and very rightmost node that you need in your network is called the hardware shader. Now if you're familiar to building shaders you might recognize some of these parts since they're the same if you were to write uh, straight in HLSL or a similar shader um, environment. And the way it works in shader FX is of the inputs you have those, those that have a red outline are required for the node to work uh, at all. So from this point it's quite easy to figure out what the next node is going to be called which we need and that is a technique node. So I'll go ahead and write technique. There we go. And I can connect that to this input and the technique node in turn needs at least one pass, pass node. There we go. I'll connect the pass node here and the pass node needs at least a vertex shader and a pixel shader. And if I write vertex, I want the one called vertex shader GRP as in group. That's the one I need. And I'll go ahead and connect that one to the vertex shader. And finally I'll need the pixel shader as well. Uh, there we go, pixel shader. And those are the five required nodes that you need to display color on your mesh. There are more um, inputs that I frequently um, connect to here. If you're going to use lights in your shader you might want to set the number of lights otherwise I think you're limited to one light if I'm not mistaken. And also the state settings you might want to connect to that one if you're going to be using um, transparency or some other kind of um, uh, shade blending. So from this point on, anything I feed into the pixel color here is going to be the color I get displayed here. But since I don't have any input now, it just defaults to a black color. So if I were to create, for instance, a color node, there we go, and I connect that color node to the RGBA input here, you can see that my object now has this gray color I select in this color swatch here. And if you have the property panel, or the attribute editor and select one of these, you can pick a color with this color picker here. So if I pick this red one, I get that color. So it's pretty much that simple to start out with a shader. Now, they're, they're not that many nodes. Um, I know them by heart by now. Um, if you want to speed up your process, you can create a group from these um, since they are always the five nodes you start out with when you create a new shader from scratch. I'll show you how to do that as well since I've, I've done it and I do appreciate it. Yeah, I'll leave the property panel. I'm not used to working with this, so you should have two screens and the attribute editor. Uh, but maybe I can... no? Okay, I wanted to maximize the screen area I have here. Anyway, um, in shader FX you'll see nodes such as this vertex shader one it's where it says group and you also have this icon here or this little button. This indicates that this is a collection of several nodes that have been grouped together and I can click this button to view that group and see what's inside if you will. If I want to go outside again or traverse upwards I can click this exit group and I'll be out on this here um, top level um, if you will. And you can even have groups in groups, such as there's another group in here. You can see group, it has this one. And um, you can go on creating groups in groups in groups in groups and so on. And the reason you'd want to do this is when you get a lot of nodes and have a complex network, it might be nice for you to organize it so that you can look at it from a top level perspective and still see uh, what's going on. And then you can go into detail if you want to tweak a certain part of your shader network. Uh, another thing is, if you have a group like this, you can add this group to your um, library of nodes or the node browser. 
And that's what I like to do with this here. Um, this, this collection of, of baseline shader nodes, if you will. So to do that, you can select the nodes you want to group, then go into the group menu and just click create group. And you get this group. Now, as you can see, I can go inside this group and um, I could continue editing from here. Now the thing I want to do here, I'm not entirely finished because I want to give it a proper name and I also need some inputs, at least one. I want to be able to access this pixel color, right? So to be able to do that, you would just drag from this one and drop in this one here. This, you can see that that green box there follows around the window on that one as well. So if you're inside a group and you want to add inputs to that group, which are accessible from the outside, or outputs, you just drag into these gray ones, which will take um, any kind of data input. The gray indicates that it accepts several different data types. So that's pretty much the most important pixel um, color. Uh, it's the most important input we want in this group. If you want to animate the vertex positions, for instance, you could take this one as well. That can be an interesting thing. Let's go ahead and do that. And also, um, as you can see, you can sometimes you don't get a, a, a descriptive name here. For instance, let's say that you had created a variable, a, a float constant, um, or sorry, rather, a, let's say a math node, a multiply node, and you'd want to connect that into here. Um, I think I'd also have to hard code this into data type for it to be accepted here. So let's say I wanted to take in a, a single float value into this multiply here. It would only be called value 2 here and if I view from the outside the, the end user won't know what, what the hell is value, what, what's that all about. So that might be that I wanted it to be called, um, yeah, for instance, um, no actually you click here, sorry, you click on this input and the, this one called active socket label, that's where you can give it a proper name. So let's say effect multiplier. And that's gonna make a whole lot more sense. If I view it from outside, I could see that, ah, okay, this here group of, of nodes has an effect multiplier. So if I want to increase the effect, I can just add a high value here and tweak it from outside here, which could be nice. But I don't want any effect multiplier, so I'll go ahead and delete that one. Uh, this one, however, is just called XYZ and from the outside XYZ doesn't tell me anything. So I'll go ahead and give this one a proper name as well. And I could just write this name because it's quite descriptive of what this input is going to do. So I'll call it, make sure you select that one and call it um, object vertex position. There we go. And that's a lot better. Finally, I want I need to give this a proper name as well. I don't want the group just to be called node. So if I select this one, the left uh, box here in the group, um, this is the, the name that's going to say here, if I'm not mistaken. So I call this, for instance, baseline. And to add this to your node browser, um, there's a command up here in the group menu called uh, save group to disk but it's going to, to give me an error if I try this, I'll show you. It will say, please set the group name, category and submenu property before saving. And to do that, you go inside the group, you select this left box here, and you need to give it a class name, a category name, and a submenu name. The class name is going to be the, na the name you see here. So I'd, I'd say, give it the same name uh, you have here. So I'll just copy that baseline and paste it here. Then you have a category name and that's the top level category here where it says, um, let's see, sorry, this one, hardware shader nodes. And you have this category and this category. So you could create your own top level category if you want and you can also add submenu categories like the core here is a sub-menu category of the hardware shader nodes or HW shader nodes. So for instance, I could go ahead and call it this, um, for instance, Costas nodes, and this one I could call core, for instance. So I'd have a, my own top category and I'd have a subcategory called core. Now that I have these three 
uh, with a set value, I should be able to add this to disk here. So I'll go ahead and go group and save group to disk. And it says a group node is being saved without an OSL code container. That's fine. If I now collapse this graph nodes and the hardware, you can see that I have Costas nodes and a submenu called core, and I have this baseline. And that's going to um, make it a whole lot easier for me to, to quickly create this baseline when, um, when um, creating a new shader, because this is always going to be available. Take note that there's one last thing I want to mention about groups, and that is this R here tells me that this is a reference. That means if I were to save this uh, as a Maya scene, if I then open it in a computer, it's going to look for a group on disk called baseline. And that could be a problem because if I move this to a different computer, my scene, and I try to open it and that computer doesn't have this exact baseline group as well, I'd get an error. And that can really be a problem. To, to get around this issue, you would either have to make sure that the other computer has the same set of custom groups, or you could select the group, go into the group menu and choose this option called make group unique. That is going to remove this R, the reference symbol here. And that means that when I save the Maya scene, it's going to save all of the contents here. It's not just going to be pointing towards a reference on disk which it wants to load. So that's, that's worth mentioning as well. So that's um, everything about creating the baseline and also how to work with groups in shader FX. Please let us know what you thought about the video and what you want to see next. To see more, visit our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter.